Can we always fear, love, and trust in God? Why or why not? Who did Jesus say that he was after he fed 5,000 people? And why was Jesus tempted in the wilderness for 40 days? We're going to answer those questions and more in today's confirmation video, so stick around. Welcome back, Confirmands. Good to be with you today as we continue to take a look at how these Old Testament stories point to Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Uh, as always, you're going to want to have with you your Bible. Also, be sure to have a pen or a pencil and some paper so you can write down any questions that you might have as you go. And be sure to bring those questions and comments to church on Sunday, to class, so that we can talk about those all together. Now, when we left off, we saw how God kept his promise to his people that he would bring them to the land that he had promised hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And even though God had led his people out of slavery from Egypt, led them by a pillar of cloud, by a pillar of fire, had fed them with manna, even though he did all of these wonderful works before them, they had rebelled and grumbled against God throughout their journey. And today we're going to take a look at how those journeys and how that grumbling points us to Jesus. But first, let's begin by remembering that we are baptized and beloved children of God in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, so first off, we have to kind of ask the question of ourselves. Are we that different from the Israelites who grumbled in the, in the wilderness? Not really. How often do we grumble to God? about having enough, even though God continually gives us clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, spouse, children, land, animals, all that we have, even though he richly and daily provides us with all that we need to support this body and life, even though he defends us against all danger, guards and protects us against every evil, how often do we thank, praise, serve, and obey him? Well, as question 34 of our catechism states, can anyone keep this commandment to fear, love, and trust in God above all things? Well, the answer is a real simple no. <laughs> because of our sin, it's in our very nature to grumble, to rebel, to be unthankful. And in that way, we're really no different than the Israelites in the Exodus. But maybe to see how this all then points to Christ, I want us to turn in our Bibles, go ahead and turn to Mark chapter 6, in verse 31, and this is the story of the feeding of the 5,000. And St. Mark starts off by telling us that when Jesus looks out and sees the crowd, Jesus sees the crowd as a sheep with as sheep without a shepherd. You know, certainly that sounds like a group that would be full of grumbling and ingratitude, and yet we can continue to read on to see what Jesus does. In an action that should remind us of God giving bread from heaven, Jesus took five loaves and two fish, and he blessed them and he broke them. And he gave them to the disciples that they could give it to the people. And through the power of Jesus' word, through this divine miracle, five loaves of bread were enough to feed 5,000 men. That's not even counting all the, the women and children who were there that day either. And there were even 12 baskets of leftovers. One basket by the way, for each tribe of Israel. St. John records this miracle, too, and he records Jesus' words after this. You can turn, if you want, to John chapter 6, verses 48 to 51, because this is what Jesus says. He says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. So when we think about that story and the giving of the manna in the wilderness, it's preparing God's people and even preparing us to see Jesus in his life and his ministry. But Jesus doesn't just say that he's the bread of life. St. John also records another story about Jesus talking to a woman by a well. This woman was an outcast. She had five husbands. And the man that she was living with, when Jesus meets her, that's not even her husband. And not only that, she was what was called a Samaritan. So she didn't worship the true God. And that's why she's out there at this well, St. John tells us, right at noontime. 
She was out there at the hottest part of the day because no one else in their right minds would want to go out to the well at that time. So she would go there when she knew no one would be around, no one would hassle her. Yet Jesus draws near to her and asks her for a drink. And as they get talking, Jesus says something really interesting. He says that he is living water. Not just living water, but the living water. Just as God gave the Israelites water in the wilderness, so Jesus gives himself the living water to anyone who is thirsty for him and for his grace and for his forgiveness. So even that story of Moses hitting the rock in the wilderness, that, that points to Jesus. But let's take a look at one more thing from the Israelites' time in the wilderness. Remember, because of their unbelief in God, those scouts brought back their report, those ten, and, and they talked about how, how God, how this land was full of giants and fortified cities, and they wouldn't be able to take it. And God disciplined his people by having them wander in the wilderness for 40 years, one day for each year of the scout that the scouts were gone. Well, let's turn really quickly to Matthew chapter 4. Now, right after Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where he was tempted to for 40 days and 40 nights. And he was tempted with things like food and with comfort. And it's a good reminder that when we are unfaithful to God, Jesus is completely faithful on our behalf. He's faithful for us. Where we would give in to temptation, Jesus is steadfast on our behalf. He doesn't give in in all those 40 days when he's without food and water. He doesn't give in to the devil's temptation. When we fail to keep the law, Jesus keeps God's law perfectly on our behalf. And that story from Matthew chapter 4 is a really important reminder of that. Jesus keeps the law on our behalf so that we can have peace with God and we can be his people. So you see how these stories in the Exodus, they all point to ways in which we see what Christ has done for us. And so that's a wonderful thing to remember as we read, especially in the Old Testament, but all of Scripture, to remember the, the forgiveness that God gives us through Jesus Christ. So remembering that, let's close with our blessing. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. We'll see you next time.